Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to episode 191 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis. My name is Crazy. Crazy? Why are you so crazy? What's up? It's just been a rough day. Yeah. It's Friday for you and I, so uh, I have to be honest because I know that there's listeners that like us and it's uh, a group that uh, Joe puts on. <laughs> Joe, tonight I'm drinking tequila. Can you spell <laughs> tequila correctly? On the rocks, straight up. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> so by the time this airs, if no one's heard from Barb, please reach out to us at <laughs> Yowzer. So, yeah. There you go. So, there you go. I don't even want to know what's going on. Then. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> Let's it. just move on, shall okay. we? <laughs> sure. Let's not make it any worse. <laughs> oh, and it's only going to get better at 515. Let me <laughs> Can't come soon enough. Nope. So Thanksgiving is this week, Mm -hmm. and let's make a note that the Tuesday after Thanksgiving is also known as Giving Tuesday. And what better way to show thanks than to give back to the industry that we all love? The Foundation for Dental Lab Technology is a great place for us to give on Giving Tuesday. So head over to dentallabfoundation.org. How do you stop right there? How what? do you even know that it's Giving Tuesday? Other people tell me. I don't know uh, these you, things. How do you, you know everything. I mean, like, really, Giving Tuesday? I completely agree, and I love it. Do it, everybody. But I just don't know how the hell you know all this stuff. So, well, you just keep pulling shit out your ass. Just saying. There you go, Joe. So, there you go. <laughs> it's the Joe episode. <laughs> You'll like this intro. So do us a favor when you're in that giving mood after the Thanksgiving, head over to dentallabfoundation.org and give some money to an organization that provides grants and scholarships to technicians to increase education and strengthen the industry by building strong and talented dental technicians. Giving Back Tuesday. Something Barb never knew about. Yeah, but I give a hell of a lot back, so. You do. It's just not Tuesday. It's every damn day. Every damn day. But speaking of the foundation, Barb and I have been selling podcast t-shirts in the past where we donate 100% of the profits towards the foundation of dental technology. I got bored and I came up with a new t-shirt design. Oh my God, did you really? Do you remember the Dare to Resist Drugs and Violence campaign that was real popular back in the 80s? No. You don't remember this? Well, maybe you should have. Maybe you would have remembered it if you didn't participate. (laughs) Well, anyways, it was hugely popular, and they had this great logo with bright red letters that said DARE, and it was real popular when I was in, like, middle school. And then in high school, we all wore those shirts ironically. But this time, the shirts will have, of course, the podcast logo on the front, but on the back, it will say DARE to say no to bad impressions. Oh, boy, you are so smart. Isn't it clever? Very crafty. I wanted to say clever, but I couldn't come up with it. But yes, it's super clever. So head over to VoicesFromTheBench.com for a link to purchase the shirt in either a long sleeve t-shirt or a hoodie, or find it on our Facebook or Instagram page. Let the world know that you are a technician that says no to bad impressions. Oh, God. Move along. Okay, here we go. This week, we take the world back to late October, when Barb and I were at the Whitmix Digital Forum in Louisville, Kentucky. Sitting at the Preet booth, we talked to many, many people that weekend. Some vendors, some attendees, they all sat down and talked about many things about this industry. But we thought we would start off all of the conversations with a double talk with some folks from Whitmix. First up, we talked to the leading lady herself, Ann Steinbach. Oh, yeah. Ann sits down to talk about the history of Whitmix, becoming CEO of the family business, and some other great stories from days past. And then we sit down with Pat Higgins and Bryce Hiller, both from the marketing department. So recently, Whitmix announced the Vera One Digital for clinicians. Well, of course, our industry did what every industry does when something new comes out and exploded with rumors and misinformation. So when we had the opportunity to sit down with Pat and Bryce to talk about exactly 
what the Vera One Digital is and how it can actually help doctors get digital and still use their favorite labs. So join us live from the Whitmix Digital Forum with Ann Steinbach, Pat Higgins, and Bryce Hiller. Did you know that most in-lab MCX5 users that have ordered burrs from Grow3x once keep on ordering Grow3x burrs over and over again? No way. You know what? I didn't know that. Why do you think that is, Elvis? I think it's because Grow3x burrs are engineered by some of the same folks who have been providing burrs to some of the largest U.S. production labs for years. Did you also know that most roll-ins and DG Shape users have no idea what they are missing out on? Well, I think I can guess what they're missing out on. You are right. Most Roland and DG Shape users have absolutely no idea how good and great Grow3x burrs are because they think that the Grow3x burrs are only for the in-lab systems. Well, they are wrong. wrong. <laughs> to give Roland and DG Shape users the opportunity to find out for themselves how great the burrs are for their machines... Grow3x is now offering a buy three, get two burrs free special. This is exclusively for Voices from the Bench listeners, you guys, so please go support them. So all you simply have to do is go to the Grow3x website. That's grow3x.com, click on burrs, then select Roland and DG Shape, add five burrs of your choice to your cart, click on checkout, enter the discount code, B3G2. That is B as in boy, the number three, G as in girl, the number two, burrs, and check out. That's awesome. You know what? We actually have a code, Elvis. Boom. That was easy, guys. Go for it. Free burrs. Use them and use them well. And we appreciate your support of the podcast, Grow3x. Thank you. Voices from the Bench. The interview. It still works. It just looked uncomfortable. (laughs) (laughs) I could only hear half of you. Okay. Hopefully the good half, which is me. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. I'm just kidding. All right. Okay. This is a super big honor. Yay. Here at the Whitmix Digital Forum 2021 in Louisville, Kentucky, we have the one, the only, Ann Steinbach. Oh, that's sweet of you all. I'm glad you're How here. Are you? Wait a minute. I always told myself if I introduced you, I was going to call you the professional Whitmix tour guide. Tour guide. That's because right. And why is that? Because when I toured Whitmix when I came here two years ago, all of a sudden, Ann's given a tour. Wow. And I'm like, wow, this is quite the treatment we're getting here. That's one of the things I love to do is I really love to show who our people are and what we do. And our door is always open. You're always welcome to come visit. That's awesome. What really surprised me is how much Whitmix felt like a lab inside of it. Yeah. Really? It, it just has a, I don't know. I've never been there, of course. Well, I would love to. Next time. But yeah. 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 It's like yeah. a, it's, it's. It's well used, but I don't want to say dirty. You know, I don't want to say that. It's just, it just has that lab feel. Like people are actually working, and I don't know. It just they yeah. probably actually are. My there's friend. a lot of stone being <laughs> made there, so it has that wow. kind of stone feel. I don't know. I just really enjoyed it. How long have you guys been in that building? It uh, we moved in like 1970. Wow. Okay. And so. um, it was a General Mills flower plant. So they had the big mill uh, flour, uh, like, silos, mm-hmm. and then they, they blended it, and they packaged it into those, you know, yeah. baking bags yep. of flour. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it's, uh, it's 26 acres, and it's right next to the football stadium and the, the airport. The building is 26 acres? The, the build, no, the property. Okay. And so. And wow. then, uh, it's but a big it's, building. It's been... Uh, it's been good for us. It's really... Um, Where were you before? Before that, we had two locations, and one of them was built in 1928. Just Whoa. give you a clue. It was, that was the new building back then. And, wow. Um, that was about 10 minutes from where we are now, and now it, it's no longer there. That's Urban Renewal took, yep. took that building. And then we had a factory down on 22nd Street, which is in a pretty tough area of town and but that was we we didn't have space in both of those buildings to run it so we had two locations and when we moved to our current location 
it put everything under one roof. That was really the first time that we did both the chemical products and the um, mechanical products and with one uh, factory. Sure. Which is pretty unusual for a company to do both of those technologies. And, yeah. and yeah, yeah, in one building. So yeah. somebody here told us you guys are celebrating your 100th year anniversary. 102, 102 year. 102, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So can you take us way back? Way Who founded back. it well, and how? You know, and I wasn't born back then. But <laughs> you don't remember. So, and I probably have like the lore that, you know, this is what I've been told. You know, it's been passed down through the generations. But my grandfather was an accountant, and that was his training, and he worked in a distillery. And in 1919. For bourbon? For bourbon, here? Yeah, yeah. And Kentucky. And then, um, so. He was looking for another job because they passed the Prohibition Law. Oh, okay, so, yeah. So, hence, he had a brother who was my great uncle, was a denture technician and had a, and a Falls City dental specialties. He had a dental lab in Louisville. And so they put together this inlay casting system in 1919, and they went on the road. And it was for, basically at that point, it was dentists who were doing inlay castings with, you know, um, investment. Yeah. Wow. And then this hand spatulator that whipped the mix. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't ask you that. Oh. <laughs> and it had a little furnace, kind of like a propane, you know, furnace. And that became very popular, and when people... They did have phones at that time, so they started calling up asking for the whip mixer. And that's when they incorporated in 1925, they incorporated under the name Whitmix, Whitmix Corporation. Do you still have one of those early kits? Yep. I bet. Yep. Oh, wow. And uh, so that was really the beginning of it. And so it was four brothers who were working together back in All the All with the 20s. same last name, Steinbach? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then over the years, then when he came back to them, my father came back to the company, and he was a mechanical engineer by training after the war, so mm-hmm. 1940s. He came back to be part of the business. So there's seven kids in my family. And so my dad was very busy with the family. And then so in 1956, I, that was... I was born, and then my grandfather then died that same year. Oh. So it gives you an idea. I never really knew him. Yeah. Just that piece of it is he was running the business, and then at the, when he died suddenly, my father then took over the business. So that was kind of a tough thing for a, a, oh, young, yeah. a young engineer. But he he really modernized the Whitmix hand spatulator, and he put a, a motor on it and it mechanized it. And then it was— This is all in the 50s? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. 50s. And then the investment— then instead of just doing gold inlay castings, you started doing the palladium and the non-precious. So yeah. then we got into our phosphate investment. Yeah. So that just you know he just continued the development of, of different you know how dentistry was changing. He had I think the real skill that my my father had was he had the ability to hire really smart individuals and really and they stayed with him you know through with the business for. I think one of them worked for 63 years Ooh. with us. Um, and that was our chemist, uh, Mr. Nyman, who formulated lit- literally those first products. And then um, all the way through, I think he died in the um, the 80s. So he died in his 80s. He did all the formulas for our dye stones, our gypsums, our uh, investments. So. You know, that's a long time to have a person work with you. I bet and you you're still using some of that stone oh. that that guy did. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Heck yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's all based on it. He, he, he always had these code names for our, our formulas because he was pretty secretive, but... They ne- he never really. We didn't put the real name on the pro- on the on the raw materials. He'd call it sneezy and oh, sneaky wow. and <laughs> anyway. That was probably before OSHA and, uh, and having to do the safe material yeah. safety yeah. sheets. But now was there a lot yeah. of competition back then for you know, dental lab? stuff i mean well yeah well they, they were we were just a tiny little company but you know you might be familiar with kerr was doing yeah that okay then. i've heard and, that name yeah, yeah and then r&r ransom and randolph was back then and so anyway it was <laughs> they're not around anymore yeah well actually they've been re um brought back who kerr no ransom and randolph oh, really? but then and then kerr's been sold you know and yeah. a different name but but we sold i mean we took it you know my grandfather took it on the train and uh the the, the history is is that we found his his mash recipe for bourbon and and the archives and we think he was probably also moonlight and the bourbon selling the medicinal (laughs) um special liquid (laughs) that's fantastic and i'm really i i don't really 
doubt that because that's really how a lot of families who were in the bourbon industry, you know, once they closed down the distilleries, you had to do something. So he was selling it during the probation is yeah. what you're oh, saying. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, nice, <laughs> nice. But we haven't uh, bottled the mash. I, I think that's probably would be fun that's to do. That's got to be coming, though. That would be fun to oh, do. Oh, you, the original yeah. recipe, yeah. you have it, like, no. bring it back. Wow. No. So, and I, not that anyone in my family has um, that chemistry background or anything, but not yet. Interesting. Super. So did you know, like, at an early age that you were going to become a part of the family business, or was that later on you? For know, you? for me, it was very much later because I have to say my parents never, I never felt that it was expected. And they also, so it was always totally our decision whether to go in the business or not. And then the other thing I would say is they gave each of the seven kids the gift of education. So we could study anything we wanted, wherever we wanted. And that's really a gift that wow, is yeah. um, Especially for really seven treasured. Kids. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I went off to college. I studied architecture. I married an architect. And I was really, I was much more of um, the left handed person in the family and uh, more creative than engineering oriented. And then I made a decision after uh, I had my first child and I thought, you know, I was kind of getting ready to get back closer to family. I was in Baltimore and then I saw my brothers going back to Louisville and thinking, gosh, what are they doing down there? What's, what are they doing in that factory? And then so we made a decision, Jeff and I, to move to Louisville. And my dad it just really, he gave me a part-time time job just to kind of Get your feet wet yep. a little bit. Get what were settled. you doing? Tour guides? Well, I, you know, I've <laughs> always been on the marketing and sales side okay. when I was with, um, when I started the company. And, and that one reason was because there was no marketing department at the company. And sure. I thought, well, I wasn't at least step on anybody else's toes, you know, so so I did that. And it's really been an interest I've always had, even with architecture. I, I love the programming and, yeah. you know, figuring out how to, you know, solve problems and help people. Sure. So. So that, that really, you know, I, I guess I came back in the 80s, and my brother Alan was president at that point, and I had uh, two other brothers who worked in the company, David and Andy, and we each had our areas of mm -hmm. uh, expertise. And, uh, Did you all get along pretty well? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It, it was, you know, in terms of making a decision, it was really special to be able to, to be there when my dad was still coming into the office, and he wasn't really in day-to-day. -day. Sure operations, responsibilities. He really was really good about turning that over, but he was there every morning and he would walk around and just visit with you. And I really, yeah. that mentoring Leadership. of, yeah, yeah, just, just really, that was really special. I had a couple of years where, you know, he was in good health and he could be there and we'd go to lunch together a lot. That's and great. You it's, just, it's hard to replace that, that memory. And every I time I drive in in the morning, I think of how proud I am to be able to be there now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. congratulations, by the way. You're president now of the company. Is uh, actually, that correct? Actually, CEO. Oh, you're so, CEO. Uh, yeah. You have to edit that out. Oh. So congratulations. <laughs> you are now CEO of yeah. the company. Yeah. So um, and that was something that happened it's, a, it's almost two years ago. We do have a president, so I just want to be careful. that yeah. Jim Myers is our, is our president, and he is not a family member, but we intentionally did that be, um, uh, about five years ago. I think it five or six. I'll be off on that. But. Alan was ready to retire, so he passed on the president role to Jim, and Jim has always, has been with us almost 20, year, 20 years, and he was really in VP of operations at that point, and really uh, brought in all the lean manufacturing and uh, efficiency, and really had, has done a great job mm. with our production and, and planning, and so it was really time to to honor you know, all his expertise. So he became president. The and first non-Steinbach. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No and, pressure, no pressure. And he <laughs> and he continues in that role. And then Alan had been uh, chair and CEO. And I saw a need to have more of a family leader at the level of um, active in the business. And so so I became the CEO and Alan kept the chair role. Nice. So. And so we worked that out, and I'm very employed. I think that was the biggest transition clarification with um, that's uh, that uh, the CEO is not a part-time position. It's a very uh, oh, full-time yeah. position. So, <laughs> yeah. um, and, and especially the needs of the company is, you know, I, I'm very employed and engaged yeah. and active in the, in the planning of 
day-to-day things. Now, the only person that reports to me is the president, though. Just the clarity of the oh. team is is Jim's team, and that gives me time for more of the family and the shareholders and planning for what our future is. And so, wow. there's plenty to do. Boy, yeah. I know. What <laughs> does your day-to-day look yeah. like? Is it a lot of just planning for what's to come? Yeah. Or? Well, it is, but there's a we have a weekly executive team meeting, so that we do have a cadence of reporting and sure, there's yeah. monthly, quarterly. We we have our goals every quarter. Absolutely. And yep. That leadership team meets every Wednesday and I'm part of that and we have, you know, we're we're doing our where we are to, to our uh, weekly goals and budgets and what our challenges are, our issues and we're processing those issues. You know, it's a lot of cross-functional communication like um you know, something's on back order. Well, if the sales needs to forecast it. I mean, you know, how all the different so parts of operations yeah. Yeah. have to work together. And, and then really that piece of it, I, you know, we got through COVID together. That, w- that yeah. was a big one. You know, that was my first year as CEO. Was yeah. Good job. Good job. Wow. We were meeting daily on COVID, actually. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but it's a, it's a really strong team, and there's a lot of experience just amongst, you know, whether it's the CFO, all the, you know, the financial background that, that he brings and the planning. So, so my day, what I love, and you probably know because we started with the tour, yeah. is I still am very involved with the customers. All those friends I've made in the dental oh, industry absolutely. for 35 years is um, – they have my number. They can call me. And, you know, I have got a lot of emails. And so I really don't want to lose that contact. And sure. I think that's really important. Um, I agree. You know, yeah. we, we might, um, you know, we go into a lot of new technologies. But at the end of the day, what differentiates us is um, it, it is a family business. And you know who we are. And we want you to know who we are. Yeah. And, um, if you need something, you know who to call, and um, and it may not be me that makes it happen, but I can certainly spread the word, Absolutely. and that's true of anyone at Whitmix. It's not like you just have to call me, but I, we can be very available because we're a pretty small company. When it, you know we're we're accessible, that's yeah. that's the our intent is to be accessible. Yeah, that that makes a lot of yeah. sense. Yeah. Customer service is amazing. Yeah. We've always heard that. With my new job, I'm in the area, kind of, and I yeah. visit labs, and so many of them have their three shape through you guys, and they love yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, we're strong in the Midwest, particularly. Well, of course. Yeah, it's just where you're at. Yeah. yeah. But um, but now, recently, we have really expanded our support to every time zone now. Really? And, and, and really, I think COVID stretched us to, yep. to have people work remotely, work from home, and so now they're in Connecticut. They're in, uh, I think it's Oregon or Seattle. I get them confused, those West Coast states. But um, <laughs> down in uh, now North Carolina. I mean, you have employees out yeah, there that so, handle the yeah, technical? So, yeah. and, and really, so it's, it, it, we can work, the, you know, span the hours, the time zones. Yeah. And, so, and they're accessible with um, Team Viewer. They can log on and see the computer, you know, yeah. issues you're having. 6 o'clock in California is 8 o'clock here. Oh, it's yeah. getting late. I know. So um, that's pretty cool. We've probably double our team resources and then put them in the right time zone so i think we're a stronger company now having yeah. done that so we still have the group in wet mix it's basically a one shift production although we've been on overtime for about the past six months is that a good thing so well i think they're tired <laughs> yeah I, th- I think it's really we're we don't really want to keep doing that i mean it's just been um i think when they, the industry closed there was a sort of a backlog oh yeah you know, now we're trying to fill that yep. fill yeah, the need and well, what then, were you guys doing with in yeah. overtime like stone was that yeah a, that's yeah? a big part of seriously. it seriously yeah, yeah you i know, always thought stone would be like dipping by now but you know you know I mean, it's very stable and i would just say that you know we sell overseas too so those oh, are big yeah. container loads and so the orders and now as those countries are opening up those are big orders that come in and it's you know it's kind of like the the snake swallowing the rat and we got we got to get it oh, all the way God, through yeah. and back on yeah. to the shipping dock and blender. I could imagine so. the headache of getting yeah. stone across the ocean. But, um, <laughs> but I think you know I think usually the comment I get you know when we're taking the tours is uh, how clean the facility is yeah. and the blending because we have to be very careful about the dust and the manufacturing yeah. of the gypsum so it is a dirty you know it's a dusty process but we have all that dust control and yeah um, so yeah we're busy. We're busy. Yeah. So were you part of when Whitmix started getting into the digital? 
Were yeah. you big into that? Because you handled it very well and well, positioned yourself well. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, thank you for saying that. I feel like it's been a long haul. I bet. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but some of it really I've related to because architecture had already gone through CAD CAM. I mean, you know, you think about used to draw with lines. That was yeah, when I was yeah. in architecture school. Well, they went into software and CAD drawing. So, so I understood it conceptually. So the transition for me was, as you all, as a lab's transition, I was, you know, seeing it and then bringing it, you know, the, what the need was and then um, finding partners to work with. So I was yeah. really, I was probably in on it from the very beginning, but really bringing in people who had the knowledge to really help us sort of support it and plan ahead with it. And, and now I feel like we've, we're kind of the tipping point where I consider us experts at it. I mean, I oh, think yeah. the uh, the training and the education and that, that piece of it, and you just build on it, keep building on it. You start with, you know, the level of understanding and then the next level. And now that we're into, you know, so many of the occlusion goes into whether it's Dawson programs or Panky or all, 90% of the schools use our articulators. Yep. Well, you know how they're doing that now, I and mean, there's a there's a you know digital component of that and the scanning, and so we're we're just we keep following it and and the learning as the technology changes. Yeah. You know, we started with Three Shape, and they've been a great partner with us. And then we went into the three um, D printers. Yeah. And nice. That, yeah. Who and chose us? How who? Made the, yeah, who yeah. made that relationship? Because it's been phenomenal. Yeah, it has been a great relationship. I have not met someone that has not liked their Asiga. That's and and it's a great company. You know, it's um, you know, it's from Australia. So sometimes the supply chain takes a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they came, and I think it was um, I think it was when I think Stuart made the initial okay. um, connection with them, and then they came and they visited, and then you know we always vet things out, and so sure. our tech team was you know working with it. Kind of playing with it and so we made that decision and it's been a a great printer and then you know as you know now with the pace of technology a new one comes out about every 18 months so yeah and so that's your commitment is that technology you just have to stay with it and then we decided to um, focus on developing resins sure just like you know what we do with the gypsums is well now we're we're the resin companies i think that the difference between whitmix from let the last generation to this generation is I, it's really hard to be experts in both of hardware and technology of chemicals. So we've picked the chemical formulation side of it and then picked great partners for the, yeah. for the printers. Well said. I couldn't yeah, imagine no. being a chemical resin so. person. That's that's intense. So, you know, and then at this digital forum, I mean, we've had our whole, what's great about it is our, our team, our R&D team can come over and listen and hear and yep. learn. And, and that's one reason I really like to have these type of educational events is it's not just, you know, what we can sell the labs or doctors. Uh, it's like what Whitmix can learn yeah. from, from the discussions sure. here. So. It, it works both ways. It's yeah. a great event yeah. and well received. Everybody's yeah, just I think this has buzzing. been really successful. Yeah, it's really, uh, yeah I, I see that it's already lined up for next year. Yeah, I'm up. Same place. Yep. Nice. Right. I love Same it here. Time. It's great. Yeah, great think, location. Yeah, Super so, close to the airport. So there's a little story about this place. Is Back when my dad was still coming into the office every day, this was where his executive team would come and have lunch. So it's kind of a retro oh. feel to him. It's a big. It's an older hotel. Yeah. yeah. I was and, wondering um, that. But when I was then, at that time, cutting grass and painting, I was on the maintenance crew, you know, <laughs> summer, <laughs> summer job. And um, so he would, he would bring me with him on those Friday lunches. And, and they would always have a martini together, yeah, or bourbon. Yeah. And, and, yeah, yeah. Um, but I just have a lot of really great memories of, of having lunch with my dad. And he, and he was bringing me along. and you know wow. At this hotel. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. That's, that's a, nice. So we goes way back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's exciting. I'm yeah. so happy we were yeah. able to finally yeah, sit down with I you. I know. Yes. We've had this a few times. Yeah. Thank you. So you're welcome anytime. Anybody wants to come for a tour. Absolutely. Or visit, I, just, we, I would love to host anyone anytime well good all right to you okay. and your family and thank all you yeah, thousand thanks. of our listeners yep. are going to show up on okay. monday morning yep. <laughs> let's do this i'm yeah. ready all right. okay all right. but <laughs> thank you yeah thank okay. you for the event yeah. thank yeah. you for inviting us thank yeah. you for the sponsorship of the podcast you guys oh, have been sure. a huge That's part right. of our yeah, growth absolutely yeah. and uh, we appreciate it thank you okay thanks. thank you so much thanks Ann. bye in there <laughs> Charlie two niner <laughs> Charlie two niner <laughs> requesting flyby. 
That's funny. You sound like a natural. You I know. watched Top Gun last week. <laughs> Did you? Yes. The new one? Or? Yes. My son's going as uh, a fighter pilot for Halloween. He's yeah. 16. And he's never heard of Top Gun. Oh. So, so we watched it so he could get refreshed. The original? On. Yes. Yeah. That's great. They're getting ready to come out oh, with another one. Oh, the volleyball one. scene. Who's, who's, <laughs> best who's in ever. the new one? Uh, Tom Cruise is yeah. in it. No yeah. kidding. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. That's pretty Goose awesome. is dead, so he's yep. not in it. Yeah. yeah. I'm this yeah. Goose. That was sad. Yeah. By the way, Cassandra, I hear you're telling him that you picked these shoes out. You found them online. You're in trouble, young you lady. You told me you're on in Lab trouble. Day East. You're like, aren't they great? I made these online. <laughs> yeah, you told me they just got delivered. She brought them. Yeah, you told me you made them online. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And Elvis he, is and yes. recording. <laughs> and you can't even you can't hear what's going on in my ear too. What they're really saying. Is the producer behind the wall there. <laughs> right. is, uh, he's got all types of stuff he's saying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, we'll take a couple photos. Right. No shoes though. No. All right, we are day two Whitmix Digital Forum. Great event, guys. Thank Absolutely you. outstanding. Yes. Yep. I've been to one other one, and this is by far even better. Growing every year. We're super excited about it. Truly. It's a full house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's hope amazing. to grow even more next year. Pat Higgins. Yep. Bryce Hill- Hiller. Mm-hmm. Bryce yep. Hiller. Yep. Two guys from Whitmix. Is this your first digital forum? It's my you? second. You were it's here. Okay, because yep. I know you just started when we had you on the podcast last time. Yep. I wasn't sure where that fit in the thing. So. Yeah. Of course, we didn't have it last year, so I I got here as soon as the forum was going on, pretty much. Is yeah, when arrived, so. I was going to say it was right about that time. Yep. Do you know a little bit more about dental now? <laughs> 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 you know, Elvis, I'm still drinking from a fire hose. There's no question about that. Um, but, yeah, a little bit more. A little bit to make me yeah, dangerous, absolutely. I think. Yep. So, Bryce, what's your story, just real briefly? Uh, uh, it's kind of all over the place a little bit. I started out in a laboratory, Ford's Dental Lab in Ohio. Ford's? They're still around. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Trey Ford, Drew Ford. And, uh, you know, I started lear- I, I learned everything analog. And, you know, over time, just started integrating digital technology. And it was a great experience. And back in, let's see, it would have been early 2019, came to Whitmix, worked in technical services. Um, so it was, you know, talking to our customers every day, supporting yeah. supporting those products. And then Pat came on to our marketing. Uh, he's running our marketing and business development department. And I don't know, we kind of hit it off pretty early on just, For sure. just in terms of, you know, how we work together. And uh, so now I'm in the marketing department with under, under, underneath of Pat. So you took so. a skilled wow. technician r- doing technical and took him out of that role, which is, I'm sure, hard to find. Yep. And put him in marketing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the reason behind that was we wanted to make sure our message made sense. And By having yeah. a technician do oh, it. Yeah. Absolutely. Makes sense. You know, yeah. um, especially for me, Bryce has been a huge help because I don't have that background. Yep. So, you know, I'm, I can create a message all I want, but if it's not right and it's not hitting home for the, for the lab or the dentist, then what's the message worth? Sure. And he helps a ton of that. And, and he's, on top of that, he's uber creative. You know, he's made the shoes. Yeah, yeah. Love the <laughs> shoes. <laughs> right, yeah. I saw him on Facebook this morning, and I was like, those are cool. Yeah. They've been a hit. Yeah. They've and been now a everybody hit. has them. I'm going to be so, honest. Yeah. You know, a few years ago, <laughs> carbon shoes were the big thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. that. These are cooler. Yeah. yeah. I'm, uh, really? Uh, they're they're just, neat. what, Vans? That are they're yeah. Vans. They're yeah. royal yeah. blue, yeah. and they have whip on one and mix on the other. And then you don't have to wear those stupid dress shoes. And you feel comfortable. You super comfortable. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's exactly right. I've had more people comment on them. i got to give it to Bryce. I was like, you know, I'm a 52 year old man. Should I be wearing a set of Vans? But <laughs> you should. Yes. You should. But yes. it's going over well. Absolutely. <laughs> What's next? Well. The Whitmix skateboard? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, don't give anything away. <laughs> yeah. So, how are you liking the marketing? Oh, it's yeah. great. Working underneath a pat is, uh, I couldn't ask for a better situation. I mean, I, I get to be creative. I know he's sitting right here. We'll talk about <laughs> yeah. it later. Yeah, right. yeah, we'll, yeah, I'll say the bad things yeah. after, yeah. You know, <laughs> off the record. But no, uh, it, it's, it's awesome. Um, it's awesome to. Um, to be on this side of the industry and, and get to help with, with, you know, direction. And I get to be creative. I mean, I get to really, really do what I love. And uh, it, it's it's an awesome experience. Sure. Yeah. Are you guys both out of Kentucky right here? Yep. Okay. We're here in Louisville. Yeah. So you moved from there to here? From Ohio. Wow. Yeah. Yep. 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 That's not so. much of a change. Yeah. Either. When I you're in this area, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ohio, yeah. It was, Illinois. It was a hop, skip, and a jump. Yeah, I'm there's, not, throw much away. Right. there's not much of a difference. <laughs> and somehow we're all related somehow. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not going to talk stuff. We're all like six cousins. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. Yeah. So Whitmix announced at the ADA event, I believe, that you've opened up a whole kind of digital workflow for the clinician side. Correct. I think a lot of rumors blossomed out of that, as it always does. Social media kind of, what the hell is going on? Yeah. 
So what is it? So if you'll indulge me, let me please. About, you know, Absolutely. yeah, yeah. yeah. So we had been working on this for over a year and a half. You know, Whitmix took a, a look at ourselves. We've been in the industry for over a hundred years. The Steinbach family is, you know, oh yeah, uh, it doesn't get any Legendary. better than that. Yeah. It, a- absolutely. And they challenged us to to look at ourselves and see how are we going to be relevant for the next hundred years. Sure. Where is the industry growing? Where is it moving towards? And how do we make sure that we're a part of that? Mm-hmm. And so we we literally went to work. We we did a uh, an analysis with over 30 dentists across the country, asking them what's coming, where are you trying to grow to, what are you trying to do. We took all that information back. We went internally and kind of started to go to work on some things. We actually got labs involved to kind of talk about where is the lab industry going, what's that, where's that working. From that, we built out the system, the Vera One system, which is what we're going to talk about here. And then we we placed all that with 10 dentists for them okay. to kind of. Like play with it, beta, beta yeah. test oh, yeah. it, and um, we called it the Frankenstein Project, where we, you know, super glue and tape and just enough smoke and you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. stick like some electricity to it, and let's see if it works. And coming out of that, we feel like we've developed something that's pretty exciting. We wanted to launch in July. We were hoping to launch in July. Supply chain and everything going on sure, has yeah. been just brutal, right? Yeah. And so our big deal was we we're going to launch at the ADA. Well, we still supply chain, all those things going on. It, it, it's still been a little bit tight for us to do it at the ADA. So we decided to do a reveal at the ADA instead of actual launch. Yeah. And from that, uh, we had an opportunity with a couple of publications to do a Facebook Live scenario. Okay, from that. yeah, sure. And I think that, you know, hindsight being 2020 is where the message kind of got lost. Yep. And what reality is, we've gone to work at building a clinical solution to be able to send a digital workflow to their lab. Mm-hmm. Th- this entire thing is built for the doctor and the lab to work together as digital dentistry grows. So, and I wanted to make sure uh, Bryce was here because with Bryce's background, having lab background and working with dentists, you know, he can speak to exactly as well as I can, you know, exactly how beneficial this is for the labs and, and the doctors. But you've heard just in the last two days where the industry is going and sure. you know digital oh, yeah. dentistry is here mm-hmm. and labs are near and dear to our heart so w- what we wanted to make sure happened was out of this workflow how do we make it easy for as digital dentistry grows that these dentists can send that digital work to their lab and any lab they want any lab mm-hmm. they want yeah any lab they want we 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 create we uh, partnered with evident labs solely for the purpose of if a lab is not digital and the doctor wants to do some dental work, well, they have a lab that they can work with. Which would be evident. Nice. Evident. But if they if their lab is digital, then... Then it's they, seamless. It, yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And they are part of the process of actually when we sell the system, we will bring the lab in and set them up into the system immediately. Mm-hmm. So, and I'll kind of give you a, a, an overview of the system. So, we um, when we interviewed all those doctors... Uh, what we asked was, what were the barriers of entry to digital for you all? You know, yeah. what makes it hard? Of course. $30,000 scan. There you go. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. Right. Hear it all the time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They didn't want to spend that much money on a, yeah. on a digital workflow, right? Also, barrier to entry. They, good Lord, they didn't want to have to learn CAD. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, oh, my God. Huge Why would they? Yeah. 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 Exactly. They don't have the time exactly. for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they're like. Okay, now I got to call so and so and so and so, and I got to get this piece of equipment from that person and this piece of equipment for that person. Materials, I got to learn how many materials that go with what. I yes, always ran into no doctors. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, if I buy X brand scanner, are you going to be able to work with it? Mm-hmm. Right. Am I going right. to be able to use this with that? Will it work with my comb beam? I mean, it was just way like, too was, many yeah. questions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and one big thing that uh, you guys obviously know, having been in the lab for so long. You know, if you have, let's say you have like a 3D printer from one company, you buy the resin from another company and software from another company. If you have a problem, they're all going to point the finger at each oh, other. Oh, yes. yes. It, it's true. It, it, I mean, it happens all the time. Like yeah. I've had so many conversations where that where that's just so prevalent. And, you know, that's really what we're kind of trying to solve with this Vera One package is, you, you know, these doctors, uh, it's just so much more seamless because they have one person they can call to get the answer because, you know, we're, we're providing them with, with all of that. So um, it really is, it really is pretty uh pretty awesome the, the one thing that I, I really like about this package is um we have this a file transfer service called whitmix cloud it's very similar to three shape communicate okay so it this is this is the mechanism that allows the doctor to send to whatever lab they want to 
the service is actually completely free for laboratories. You don't have to pay a cent to get your cases. You can get your cases as... Uh, well, you're already better than half of the scanners. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. Yeah. No. right off the bat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, I, th I think that's pretty huge. And the scanner software, Whitmix Clinic, can actually export three shape files, ExoCAD files, Dental Wings files, as well as raw STL, OBJ, and PLY. Okay. So you left out in lab. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah, that's not. It's, it's common. Yeah, yeah. that's out of the three. I just want to yeah. make sure we're clear because there's a lot of in lab labs out there. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know if that was. In, it's a hard. I system doubt it was to in, crack into. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It, it's it, it, you know, it's hard to integrate into. Sure. So you know, yeah, I, I, I'm really, I'm really actually excited because you know it truly is completely open, and I think that's kind of where the disconnect was. Uh, I think people were uh, were under the impression that we were actually going to be doing designing. Which, that's which yes, which you know, I did, yeah, zero. I did hear so, that. Zero. I did hear that. Zero design. Zero design. Yeah. It really, so. the, the whole, again, goal was the biggest concern for doctors was having to learn CAD and do design. So we need the lab for that, right? Exactly. And, and we want to make sure yeah. that c uh, keeps that lab connection there. We went to work on making sure, Bryce kind of alluded to it, we had the printer software built around making sure it works with the scanner, right? We had our materials that we've already validated on the entire workflow, yep. right? We, our washing system and our curing unit all work within the system. So a dentist doesn't have to learn anything. What, what he has to learn is two days of training on the scanner and how to turn the yeah. piece of equipment on and, and go. Yeah, yeah. So the system starts with the scanner. We have a, what's called, it's the Vera One system. The scanner is called the Veripulse. So it's a whole new scanner. I mean, it's not, okay. Correct. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everything we, we did, we designed and engineered around what we're calling an ecosystem. Okay. This is an ecosystem that all works with, with each other. You don't have to... You don't have to worry about does, like we talked earlier, does one piece of equipment work with another? Does the sure. material work yep. within the system? All that has been pre-done. Yeah. So it starts with the scanner, the Vera Pulse. Then we have the Vera Echo printer. And then we have our washing unit. Why didn't you do the Asiga? We have a great relationship with Asiga, yeah. for sure. A lot of it was a price point scenario okay. at this point in time. One of the big concerns was, you know, does a doctor want to spend X amount of money? We were able to, with our buying power and with our relationships, be able to provide a package. It's forty two thousand dollars for a scanner and a printer. Yeah. That's well, wait, nice. wait okay. A yeah, you're not yeah. done. You get it. But wait, there's <laughs> you get more. It. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Billy Mays here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get a scanner. You get a printer. You get a uh, washing unit, the Vera World, yeah. and you get a curing unit, the Vera Lux. Forty two k. For forty two k. Nice. Yeah. And on top of that, we will, which is, you know, I was so proud earlier. Um, Dr. Shearer got up and talked about the amount of support that Whitmix does and, and how we're known in the industry for oh, it. Yeah, for sure. And that's, you know, that, that brings, I know, a tear to all of Whitmix's heart because we work so hard on that. And one thing that we wanted to make sure happened with the system was we knew that if a dentist received this system and it was sent out to him and here you go and, you know, here's a book of instructions. They're not going to use it. They're not going to use yep. it and they're going to fail. Yep. So a part of that forty-two grand, we are going to fly our Whitmix team out to whoever buys it in the country and give them two days of on-site wow. training. Yeah. We're going to install every yep. piece of the equipment. Is that correct? Them and their staff. So we're going to spend two days at their facility, train every single person on that entire workflow, all the materials, everything that goes with it. Then they get a year's worth of support, Whitmix nice. support yeah. for a year or part of it. For forty two thousand dollars. Wow. And includes a laptop as well. I'm sorry, the scanner has a wow. laptop as well. So you're getting for what I want to say that the dentist that is trying to get into digital, granted and I'm I'm not ashamed to say our scanner is not a trio scanner today. But this is an entry level general practitioner. What dentist. would you say it's comparable to? Probably the Medit. Okay, close good. to the Medit. I've heard nothing but good things about the Medit. Yeah, so. the Medit's great. Yeah, and this is a great scanner, and that's kind of what we were trying to compare to. You know, yeah. we don't we don't Makes want sense. a dentist to have to spend thirty five thousand dollars. But also, that trio yeah. itself is what eighty thousand dollars. Right, I don't know for yeah. sure, but it's expensive. It's expensive. Yeah, and you get what you pay for. One to target the general practitioner that's looking to get in here yep. and not have to spend an arm and a leg. They're going to get the Whitmix support. We have been trained on every piece of equipment material there is, so it's one phone call to call us, and we will get you up and running. So what are they printing? Models is going to be probably what most of them are going to be printing primarily at, at the beginning. That's kind of, I mean, anyone that buys a printer, that's, that's typically like the sure. first thing you start with is models. Yeah, why is a dentist printing a model? Um, you know, study models, archiving, stuff like yeah. that. Um, well, from my perspective, anytime we do a diagnostic case, I mean, they've got to work it up themselves. They need the upper and the lower model. Mm -hmm. They need to see the occlusion. They need to work out the function and yeah. see exactly yeah. what they need to improve on. So yeah. Yeah. 
either we're going to do that for them or they're going to do it themselves, but they will send it to the lab for mm-hmm. yeah. my type of lab, mm-hmm. and then we'll do the wax up for them mm-hmm. or the treatment planning. Sure, or, sure. So I do think that that's something that they need. Yep. yep. Yeah. yeah. We have an ortho resin that's um, qualified as well that can be pretty useful. So, I mean, things like models, they can print night guards if they want to print night guards. And they can print. Yeah, but they uh, can't design them. Right, so yeah, it's gonna yeah. yeah, it'll go to the lab and the lab will exactly design. Right. The lab will design. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's it's kind of a if they can print it, it's a send to design and we'd send that design back, let them handle it. Yeah. Possibly. I mean it, we leave that relationship up, up to the lab and, and the doctor. Yeah. Um, so when you go and set up this system and you're working with a doctor and the doctor says, Hey, I use Smith Dental Lab mm-hmm. Do you reach out to Smith Dental Lab and get them hooked How up? We, so we encur- yeah. I, I actually encourage the lab to come to the training. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's good. And, and yeah. integrate yeah. them in literally from day one. And get I like that up. because so many of these companies, sorry to interrupt, but no, so many of these companies forget to include us yeah. on training. I can't tell you how many calls I used to get for intraoral scanning, and I had no idea what to say. Mm-hmm. Well, how do I even add your lab? I don't know. I've never seen it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It, it's part of our SOP, quite frankly. And we've, we've told all of our, our reps the first call should be once the dentist has interest, the first sh- call should be to the lab to the for lab. them to come to part of the, the yeah, presentation awesome. cool. because there's no way that this thing is going to gain traction if we were going to ask dentists to get rid of their lab. Absolutely. That's a no-brainer. Yep. So it's not going to happen. Mean, I guess right? Why, why would anybody want that? And yeah. we, well, as a company, we don't want I mean, we've, we've been <laughs> working with labs for, for over 100, 100 years. years. Exactly. You know? so, yeah. so we built the system around that. Our, our system is built for the lab to be a part of it, which I think is unique. Yep. Um, and, and exciting. It, and, and it's not like printing is doing final crowns. No, not yeah. not today. And I'm not, you know, I'm here to tell you, will it get there? I think it will. And I think they can print temps and crowns. Capable of it? Yes. Yeah. Temps. Yeah, temps, that's yeah. genius. For sure. Yep, yep. Because they they're a pain in the ass for the lab to do yeah, anyway. I, I, so I they could do their own do, temps. I, hate, I always hated doing temporary yep. lab. I mean, if, if the doctors want to print their temps, too. I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I don't want to clog up my mill with yep. PMMA. No. no, It's terrible. Exactly right. So, yes, I mean, I think eventually what's out there course temps permanents like he said yeah aligners models uh, and you know one day dentures, dentures yeah, and, and yeah. if they ever create a uh, a material that can do um you know move teeth who knows you know yeah. from that from that side if that's soon but today where are we starting i think we're starting with what, what bryce is referring to you know uh models and probably splints night guards yeah. and probably some temp work yeah yeah, let them print the models. That's yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. I'd rather use like, my printer for surgical guidance yeah. exactly. or something. Exactly. Exactly right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty good system. Um, really, really what it comes down to is, you know, and you, again, you guys know this, like a, a digital lab wants to get digital work. And, you know, we're, we've really been trying to piece together and we've pieced together a solution to help labs start getting more digital work. Yeah. Because, really. you know, doctor comes out of school. They've got a, they've got a mountain of debt. Already. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And if they buy a practice, go ahead and add on to it. Oh, and now now you want to go digital and spend two hundred fifty thousand dollars? <laughs> right. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, no, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I think we've really we've really created something awesome, a, a good way for these new doctors to get into this and to get digital work to the laboratory. I agree. Yeah. I think it's genius, and I'm glad you guys talked to us about yeah, it. Yeah, me set too. The record straight. Yeah. And we're excited. I think we'll probably launch officially and have product and shelves and ready to roll in uh, end of November. Uh, beginning of December is what we're we're shooting for, and again we're dealing with every, what everybody else is in the world, and that's just supply chain. Yeah, getting it's all also on a ship yeah. out in the ocean. It is, yeah, yeah. So it yeah. is. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. yeah. But we obviously started the pot a little bit and got a little and got people thinking about it, and we're excited about that. And I think uh, you know we've heard just here we've heard a, a ton of dentists and, and labs that now we've had those conversations with them going. That's a solution that makes sense. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And as long as when you hook these systems up and you sell them. The individual labs are first. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You yep. know, Evident is a sidebar. Yeah. Now, granted, a lot of the labs we're going to send to are going to go to Evident anyway. Yeah, I know. That's what <laughs> that happens. Yeah. That's exactly a lot right. of labs use them. Yeah. So, so yeah. it's kind of just whatever. But as long as it's the focus is keeping our industry alive, yep. Yep. it's all good. We yeah. just wanted to make sure that, you know, we didn't provide a doctor with this digital solution and them not have someone – right off the bat to send. Hopefully they're going to use our materials and, conti- and continue to move forward with it. I mean, that's the goal. Um, we want to set them up for success. Yep. Bottom line. Beautiful. We want to train them properly. We want to give them the time to be able to learn the system and not get frustrated with it, not get to a point where like, oh, my gosh, I don't know if I can get this done. We want them to walk away from this feeling like, okay, I'm ready to go. Yeah. And, and set them up for success, like I said. Good. It sounds like a great deal. Yeah, I agree. 
I'm well, super glad you guys sat down with us. I like yeah. it. It's, yeah, it's I think great. a lot of people yeah. were what? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah for sure. And but it uh, happens with everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but you always have the pot stirs, uh, stir, yeah. stirs, and it's nice to set the record straight. Yeah. So thank well, you for agreed. that. Yeah, yep. I appreciate you guys having us on. Yeah, and yeah. Absolutely. About it. yeah. It's always good. To and catch great up. meeting, by the way. This yeah. is my oh, first thanks. one. Oh, is it really? Yeah, yeah. It's been amazing. It's only going to get bigger from here. Yeah. It just every 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 year it just blows my mind. Like we have such good people in this industry, and I just try not to take that for granted, especially like after the last year and a half. Oh god. Like to like see everybody here again has just been like. It's been a little emotional, you know. Yeah. It's been, it like, has it's, been. Ju- it's just been awesome. Yeah. And, you know, thank you Even guys for coming. Uh, you think about the competition that's in the room. Everybody is here to help each other. Mm-hmm. That's so unique. Yeah. I, I didn't come from dental. Uh, we would go to trade shows, and if we were stuck next to some a certain person, it was like war. Yeah. You know. But here, it's we've heard this. How yeah. can yeah. we help each other? Yes. How can we make each other successful? And I think that's even so labs unique. too. Like, you know, we we might have two labs here that are in the same town, and you know. It's it's not like a like a necessarily like a cutthroat thing or anything no. like that. It's we're all in this together, and uh, I, that's it's one of the most amazing things about this. Yeah, yeah one of my really biggest wild. competition was is in this room when I was in a lab. Was, we're good friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 right. Yeah. I flew with somebody at DDS Clearwater, and we just interviewed him. So I, really? I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, yeah you guys are probably big competitors. Yeah, yeah. big time. But, but you wouldn't know it. Yeah, you know, it's great. So. We should be. Yeah. Well, thanks again. Well, thank guys. you. Thank you guys. Yeah, thank you so Bryce, much. Appreciate all right. it. Awesome. Stick around here. We're looking forward to seeing you some more. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Whitmix, known today for its digital equipment and materials, has always been known for decades as the leader in occlusion products with its Whitmix, Hanau, and Dinar articulators and face bows. The most popular of these is the Dinar Mark 300 series articulator. These popular semi-adjustable instruments are engineered for superior performance and tested thoroughly based on proven methodology. They bring a new standard of interchangeability with factory set accuracy within 20 microns. With their sleek ergonomic design and powdered coated finish, these articulators have a contemporary look that is as durable as it is aesthetically pleasing. The Dinar Mark 320 articulator features adjustable cod dial inclination with 0 to 60 degrees and progressive side shift fixed at 15 degrees. The Denmar Mark 300 comes complete with dust cover, 10 magnetic mounting plates, instructions, and standard black carrying case. Head over to Whitmix.com to order one today. And as always, we appreciate your support of the podcast, Whitmix. So guys, have you seen the high prices of precious metal these days? They are close to record highs on gold and palladium. We know that you are using less precious metals in your lab these days, but if you send in half of what you sent in five years ago, your scrap return will be higher than it was five years ago. Because of the high PM prices, you owe it to yourself to find a trusted, reputable refining company. Look no further. Colzer Refining has been tested, trusted, and reputable for over 100 years. They burn, melt, and assay all under one roof at their state-of-the-art refining facility in Wardburg, Tennessee. They have doubled their production capacity to ensure your scrap return within two weeks. They use an ICP for their assay technique with the fire assay method if needed as well. With all the non-precious material that has become present in today's restorations, it is important that we ensure the assay sample is homogenous. At Colzer, they take the extra step to x-ray the top and the bottom after they melt the bar to make sure the precious metal percentages are the same. If not, copper is added until they are positive and the bar is homogenous. They know that this step is very important to get a precise essay result. Their reimbursement to the customer is after their 10% refining fee. They have zero additional fees. If you need any free shipping containers, which contain a UPS prepaid, fully insured label, please visit mydental360.com forward slash refining or call the director of precious metal refining, our friend Tony Cercelli, directly at 914-906-1843. So collect those vacuum bags, floor sweeps, miscast and spills, and get the best scrap return in the industry with Colzar Refining. Tested, trusted, and honest. And we appreciate your support of the podcast, Colzar. 
Super happy to talk to Anne, Pat, and Bryce for sitting down with us at the pre booth, which Lord only knows we have to mention that, at the Whitmix Digital Forum. The Steinbach family has a legendary name in our industry, and it was really, really great to hear some of the history, the current CEO, tour guide with Anne, and all of the culture. We also appreciate definitely a big uh, buzz, Pat and Bryce, for coming on the podcast to kill the rumors about their new Vera One Digital. That was awesome, too. So just think, if they can get a few more doctors getting into a digital scanning, maybe, just maybe, we can get closer to not pouring models. Hmm. And that isn't such a bad thing. So remember, head over to VoicesFromTheBench.com or on one of Elvis's social media pages to get a dare to say no to bad impression shirt. You got a long sleeve, regular shirt, or a hoodie. And 100% of the profits will be donated to the Foundation for Dental Technology. And if you do get a shirt, please take a picture of yourself and send it to VoicesFromTheBench.com so we can post it. Absolutely. And they should be arriving just in time for all the new next year's meetings. Sweet. Well done, partner. He's the smart one, y'all. I already know you guys know that, but he's the smart one. Uh, Move along. Yeah, okay. (laughs) All right. All right, everybody. That's all we got for you. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. I'm not doing these three times. I'm just telling you that.